Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Hi, everyone. Okay. Hi, Russia White. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> we had a very short break this time. Very, very short break. So I was a little bit late. But here I am back. Back on seat. Back on seat. Yeah, we have more people in the house today. That's good. So welcome, welcome everybody. Let's quickly go and share the the link. Please go share the link. Go invite all your friends. And let's start on time. It's time for the truth. <laughs> it's time for truth. It's time for the truth. Time for truth. Okay. Here we go. So look for, look for the share button. Let's go share the the link and invite all our friends. Theophilus Muiwa is there. Who is the other person that is there? Paul Oriade. Mufel Ola is here. Of course, Rochelle White always number one. Innocent Magaji. Let me see what I missed. Okay, Innocent is there for sure. Shinwe is here. Monica is there. Linus. Ezinwa. Ezinwa is here. Benny Gift. Fumi Adewusi. Anastasia. Online Inca. Adeyemo. Gift blessing, Monica, Prisca, Denise, Gloria, Patovasi, Shioma, Angeli. Well, thank you for coming back today. Thank you for coming back so fast. We just finished one. We have so many programs going on this time. <laughs> I discovered that my team put my old teachings from Australia and other places. Uh, so when we finish this, that, that one continues. <laughs> and even before now, in the afternoon, I see that they are putting some of those teachings out there. And some of you are liking them. Some of you appreciate them because, uh, you know, you, you, some, some people couldn't believe that I've been preaching some of these things for quite a long time. Okay, here we go. You remember what we did today? What we discussed? Uh, what we have been talking about this week, our discussion has been what truth is, what truth is. And uh, so we've been uh, telling you about the characteristics of truth. What are the things that make the truth truth? And what are the things that we need to see in a truth for us to be convinced that it is truth? And if we don't see those things, we cannot be convinced that it is truth. So... We have spoken about the fact that for truth to be truth, it must be universal. Then we have spoken about the fact that for truth to be truth, it must be absolute. Then we have spoken about the fact that also that for truth to be truth, it must be objective. And yesterday we spoke about the fact that for truth to be truth, it must collaborate. It must rhyme. It must match with reality. It must correspond with reality. It has to correspond with reality before it could become truth. So today, we are continuing our classes, and we are going to be talking about truth. And for truth to be truth, it has to be based on God. For truth to be truth, it has to be based on God. 
Now, everybody have their own God, but for truth of the truth, it must be based on God. If it's not based on God, well, it's going to be very difficult to call it truth. Because let's say, if we say truth is based on man or on an individual, let's say it's, we say the truth is based on, on a human being, but the human being makes mistakes. So what about with his own mistakes? You know, then it's not going to work because truth will come out and conflict with whatever he has said. Truth will come out and refute whatever he has said. We men, we fail. We men make mistakes. We men fall. We men uh, stumble. We men are just men. So faith cannot, I mean, truth cannot be based on man. I hope you understand that. Truth cannot be based on man because man is fallible. So truth has to be based on something that is absolute, on something that is infallible, on something that is perfect. And who is perfect? I'm not perfect. Maybe you are perfect, but I'm not. So <laughs> since we are not perfect, truth cannot be based on us. Okay, maybe truth could be based on the society, the government. The government said this is truth. But we know truth cannot be based on government because... Government come, government goes. So one government comes, it brings in one truth. This, and they say it is law. Then the next government goes, I mean, this government goes, and another one comes, and you say, that one, they bring another truth and bring their own, own order. And you say, okay, they, you have another truth now. So truth cannot be based on government because you only have a government of one country and you have government of one in one continent is different from the other continent. You have a government in one country is different from the government in the other country. So truth cannot be based on government because it's not universal. And you know one of the uh, uh, one of the the characteristics of truth is that it has to be universal. It has to be universally accepted. And there is no government that will be universally accepted. And there is no government that's going to be accepted by all men. So truth cannot be based on government. All right. So truth cannot even be based on religion. Truth cannot be based on religion because your religion says and my religion says. I recognize my religion, I don't recognize your religion. So truth cannot be based on religion. Why? Because if you attach truth to religion, then you will not see the absolutism of it. And you will not see the, it, it, has, it will always be subjective instead of objective. But for truth to be truth, it must be objective, not subjective. And if you are talking about religion, that is something subjective, not objective. So truth cannot be based on religion. So also, truth has to rhyme with reality. And we know that truth is, you know, the truth is that everybody has their own religion. And everybody is defending their religion. So that is the reality. So if it is truth, it will rhyme the fact that every religion will accept it. So, if, for example, if I say, do not steal, that is beyond religion. Uh, because do not steal is, you know, understandable by all religion, by all nationality, is beyond borders, is beyond government, is beyond the continent, and is beyond religion. So, truth will always transcend religion. Truth will always transcend the borders. Truth will always transcend nationality and truth will transcend any differences that people might have. Truth will be known and recognized by all men. So we cannot base truth on any other thing than God. So when philosophers and humanists and, uh, and our contemporary scientists or philosophers come and tell us that truth is uh, we don't believe in God. Then you destroy the foundation of the society. If you don't believe in God, so on what do we base our standards? Because truth is the standard bearer. Truth is the, is the standard, is the height that we all look up to. So what do we, who decides standards? If it's not truth, if it's not God. So if it is not God, who decides the standard? If it is not God, who decides what is, who is right or who is not right? Where do we get our moral from? Because you have to have a supreme being that is, uh, that is perfect to attach morality to him. So we have to attack, attach morality only to God. We cannot attach morality to man because man, again, is fallible. We cannot attach morality to church because 
See what is happening in church. Churches also are fallible. Churches also can fail. We cannot attach morality to government because government change and fail and they are not perfect there in government. So truth and morality cannot be attached to any other thing than God. So God is the ultimate standard bearer. God is the ultimate attachment to truth. God is the ultimate decider of truth. God is the ultimate leveler of truth. So God is the only, you know, any truth, when you talk about truth, it must be gauged by God. It must be by the standard that is set by God himself. When you talk about truth, it must be a truth that is sanctioned by God. A truth that is, you know, in line with God's nature, with God's viewpoint, with God's paradigm, with God's belief system, and with God's morals, with God's values and virtues. So only those things that God, as the supreme being, as the, super, no, the one that is over and above everybody, only what is sanctions, therefore, could be recognized as truth. So truth is attached to God. Truth comes from God. God decides truth. Man cannot decide truth. No other institution can decide truth. So there is no way we could say, I don't, understand, I don't agree with God. If you don't agree with God, just like communism. You remember there used to be Lenin and Stalin and there used to be Marx and Engels. Those are people who brought about communism and they said, we don't recognize God. Good for you. But you know, truth cannot be defeated. So even though for 70 years, they cut off God from the society, they said, we don't recognize God. There is no God. We are building our country without God. But the truth is, God, it comes from God. I mean, truth comes from God. And God is existing. God is alive. Everything comes from God and rests on God. So God will give you time for you to do, to do anything you want. God will give you time for you to try. Try your best. So God withdrew. God took the back seat. And it only lasted him for 70, 70 years. After 70 years, everything collapsed. <laughs> truth will, will reveal you. Truth will expose you. Truth will come and say, there is nothing you can do against the truth, only for the truth. Truth will come and vindicate itself. Truth will come and condemn you. And the reason why truth came and destroyed communism is because God is at the source of truth. Truth itself is not, is not divisible from God. Truth is indivisible from and with God. Truth and God are one entity. God is truth. The truth is God. So there is no way you could deny God and say that you believe in truth. Your truth will not work because God is the one that is the foundation of all truth. And anything you declare or you recognize, if you recognize gravity, that is because God created it. If you recognize space, that's because God created it. If you recognize people, that's because God created them. If you recognize anything on earth, it's because it's coming from God. So, truth is based on God. Truth must be based on God. Let's look at any truth. Uh, mm, you know, but you must know the difference. There is a difference between truth that is based on God and truth that is based on religion. So, you cannot say... You must come to my church before you could be saved, because you could meet God. I cannot say that. I, can, I cannot say that because my religion or my, my church is limited. But I can introduce you to God. That will be the truth. Because my church is not universal. Even if it is everywhere, but it's not absolute. It is not, uh, sub, it's not objective because it's subjective because it's my church. So church is not truth. Or religion is not truth. Truth is God. And God is connected with the truth, but not, it's not the church that decides the truth. So, um, yeah. Truth is based on God. It's based on God. God is the standard for the truth. God is the standard bearer for truth. God is the ultimate decider when it comes to truth. And God is because when it comes to the truth, it must be hinged on something or somebody that is there forever. Truth must be inched on someone that is in, in, unchangeable. And we know God is unchangeable. So truth can only be inched on him. Truth can only be inched on someone that is omniscient, that knows everything, that is all-knowing, that is God. 
So truth is inch to, to God. Good truth can only be inch to the one that is everywhere present, that is omni, omnipresent. And the only one that is every, that is present everywhere is God. So truth is inch to God. So when I come to you and I say, mm, well, you don't come to my church, so you are not going to heaven. I cannot decide that. Only God can decide that. When I say, well, God has not accepted you, or you are not saved, or you are saved. We cannot even decide that. Only God can decide that because God sees the heart of man. And I don't see the heart of man. And uh, so Jesus is the truth. God is the truth. And uh, so truth must be connected with God. That's why Jesus is God. If Jesus is truth, then it means Jesus is God. If Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, it means he's saying, I'm God also. And because if it's true, then it's only God that is the truth. It means Jesus is the truth, only God can say. So and if, if anything is true, it's because God's hand is in there. God's hand is in everything. So only God provides us with unchangeability. And because it's unchangeable, now we can rely on that truth that nothing will change. This is secured. Because only God is universal. Yeah, we know that yeah, that truth will be truth in Africa, in Europe, in Latin America, in Asia, is going to be the same thing. And we know that God is the one that is that cannot be doubted. God is the one that is having an uh, an unbeatable reputation and on uh, on scratch reputation. So God is absolute, and only His views could be decided and looked at as absolute views. So so. Uh, all truth must be based on God. All truth must be based on God. Let's find out about that. Let's find out about that. In John chapter chapter 18, verses 37 to 38. John 18, verse 37 to 38. The Bible says, Pilate, you know, that was the king of the, the ruler of uh, Jerusalem and of Israel that time from, from, from uh, the Roman Empire. So Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? He's asking Jesus, Are you a king? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. You said so that I am a king. So I am a king. To so this end was I born. So Jesus now started describing his mission to the earth and on the earth. To so this end I was born. And for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. That I should bear witness unto the truth. So Jesus came and said, that's my mission. I am here to bear witness to the truth. And if he's here to bear witness to God, it means the truth is God. And God is the truth. So he declared his mission and said his mission is to elevate the truth of God. His mission is to declare the truth of God. His mission is to establish the truth of God. So God's mission is about truth, which means Jesus' mission is about truth, which means his mission is to testify about his father, and his father is the truth. So he, everything is based on the truth. So if we are Christians or we are believers and we say we believe in God, we must make truth our priority. If we believe in God, we must believe not just in the truth, but truth must be our highest standard, our only standard. Truth must be the only foundation upon which we gauge ourselves and look at the world. We must be looking at the world on the basis of truth. Even here, Jesus didn't say, well, I came to testify about God. No, he said, I came to testify about the truth, of the truth. And he's saying, so, so the king of the world, the whole world is looking for truth. Pilate is looking for truth. Everybody in the world today is looking for truth. And that's what Jesus said. Everybody is in need of truth because the whole world is based on truth. And truth is built into everything. That is why everybody wants to know the truth. So don't be deceived by people who say they don't care for God, they don't want to know about God, or they don't want to know about truth. No, everybody wants to know about truth and because everything is based on truth. Because it is only when we walk according to the truth that we prosper. It is only when we walk by the truth that we live, that we have life. But when we walk or live against the truth, then we are destroyed. We destroy ourselves. We cannot survive by you know, living against the truth. So because truth is absolute, 
truth is universal truth is objective truth you know cannot uh, truth is 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 in line with reality so there's nobody that can say they don't need the truth and this is a proof to us when Pilate saw Jesus, the only thing that he was interested in is to ask Jesus about truth. He was interested in the truth. He wanted Jesus to explain to him what truth is. So what is truth? Everybody is interested in what is truth. So if you will, if you will, uh, you know, if you will equip yourself, will ban yourself to the truth, you will always be relevant because everybody needs the truth. The truth is needed everywhere. So don't you be ashamed of truth ever. Don't you be afraid of truth. Don't you be ashamed of it. Don't you hide the truth. Don't you, you don't, don't you play politics with the truth. Don't play political correctness with the truth. Because the thing that everybody really needs is the truth. Because it is only when people know truth, they could be set free. It is only when you know the truth, you are set free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's why everybody needs truth, because everybody needs freedom. Everybody needs truth, because everybody wants to be set free. So don't ever hide truth. Don't ever, you know, you know, uh, run away from truth. Don't ever be ashamed of truth. In fact, the person you are hiding the truth with, I mean, away from is the person who needs the truth most. Everybody needs the truth. Even the person you think that would never accept the truth is the one that needs that truth most. So truth is absolute. Truth is God. God is truth. And Jesus said it is his ultimate mission. And his ultimate mission is to witness to the truth. To bear witness to the truth. He said, I, therefore I came to the world. And for this cause I came to the world. That I should bear witness unto the truth. If Jesus is saying that is his ultimate mission, it means that should be our own ultimate mission too. The truth of God, the truth of God's understanding, the truth of God's virtues, the truth of about God's understanding of life, God's insight, God's vision of, of, of life, and the truth about how heaven looks like, because heaven is the prototype of the earth. The earth is a copy of heaven. So we need to have the truth of how heaven looks like. Because when we get the picture of how heaven looks like, how God looks like, what are the characteristics of heaven and of God, then we could be able to duplicate it here on earth. We will be able to, you know, replicate and duplicate truth here on earth. So that is the truth that Jesus said he came to bear witness to. He came to testify about the truth. He came to bear witness to the truth of God, to the truth of heaven, to the truth of the kingdom. So if Jesus is identifying himself and saying, this is what I came for. Truth is the ultimate. Why is it that we don't hear about truth these days? Nobody preaches about truth. Nobody talks about truth. <clears throat> Many people have compromised about truth because we think that, uh, you know, we don't know what it is. Well, it is time to resurrect this truth. It is time to come back to truth again because truth is life. Life is based on truth. G truth is God. God is truth. So he said, I came to bear witness. If Jesus is bearing witness about truth, we all should bear witness about truth. So everyone that is of the truth, Jesus continues to say, and say, everyone, if ev anyone that is of the truth will hear my voice. So what really matters is not religion. Truth is superior. What really matters is not church or denomination. Truth is superior. So some of the times, <clears throat> we just make a lot of problem from where problem is not existing. If we see that people are people of truth, even if they belong to other religions, you'll find common language. If people are people of truth, even if they have some sins in their life or they are not perfect or they have some challenges they are struggling with, but look for truth. If they are lovers of truth, that's what you need. God knows how to work with them. God knows how, he's, he already is people because God himself is a God of truth. So anybody that did, that our, our highest qualification and our highest desire is to look for truth in people, not look for denomination in people, not look for uh, church in people, not look for, you know, uh, race in people, not look for nationality in people, but look for people of truth. Look for truth in people. Because if you find truth in people, you find God in people. So because God is truth. So Jesus said, I came to bear witness to the truth. And then he says, everyone that is of the truth, hearing my voice. So that's the standard. If people who know truth, they will not reject what you are saying. 
But if you bring religion to people, they will reject you. But if you bring truth to the people, they will accept you if they have truth. So that's why somebody was asking me the other day and said, Pastor, why is it that we are no more having so many people listening to this topic? Because it's a hard topic. With the same thing with Jesus, when he was talking about, when we were talking about money, we were having 500 people at the same time watching, 400 people watching. But when we were doing about truth with Jesus also, he said, will you also go away? They said, oh, this is a hard saying. <laughs> it's a hard saying. People don't bear this. But the truth is, if people love truth, if people know the truth, if people are, are of truth, they will be attracted to it. They will be drawn to it. And that's what Jesus was saying about the, about the Pharisees. He said, you are, you are the children of your father, Satan. He is a liar from the beginning and he's still lying now. That is why religion is more attractive to people. That is why church and organizations are more attractive to people. Because people like to lie. What is a lie? You are thinking one thing in your heart, but you are pretending before the pastor. You are playing a game. You are playing a game and you are saying, oh, everything is okay. You are doing everything in church. But when you go out, you have your own opinion. Or you go to your kitchen, you go and talk with your people, with your friends or on telephone. Because you are living a lie. So you are not of truth. And that's what Jesus told his people. He said, you are not of truth. You don't know the truth because you are lying. You, you know, you, <laughs> he said, but I have come from my father. I came to bear witness to the truth. And those people who are of the truth, they know my voice. They recognize me. They don't know the truth. They might not know religion, but they know truth. They might not know denomination, but they know truth. They might not, they might not even have a church. But they, if they have truth, they recognize Jesus. If they, <laughs> they might not even, they might even call themselves uh, unbelievers. But if they love truth, they recognize the truth. So sometimes we don't need to push people in the head with religion. We don't need to beat people in the head with religion. We don't need to, you know, push religion too much or denomination too much or differences too much. If you could present God or Jesus as the truth, because He's the truth, He's the way, He's life. So if you could push Jesus to people as the truth, they will fall in love with truth. And people who fall in love with truth, they recognize Jesus eventually. If you could present truth to people, they will eventually, if they love truth, if they belong to the truth, they will know Jesus. They will recognize his voice. Because that's what Jesus is saying here. Everyone that is of the truth will hear my voice. Not just everyone that is in my sheep. They are not yet in his sheep. I mean, they are not yet in his in his. Uh, his sheep yet. They are not yet in his in his uh, fold, fold yet. They are not yet in his fold. They are not yet his sheep. But if they love truth, if they know if they are of the truth, even though they are atheists right now, even though they are they are Muslims right now, even though they are Buddhists right now, but if they are of truth, they love truth, they will recognize Jesus sooner or later. And that's what I see in church these days. I see that, okay, can you imagine? Somebody came here the other day and told me that there are people who are doing live brokers that I'm like I'm doing right now. And people say, okay, I even saw one myself today. Somebody will say, okay, uh, the day, today, the day, you know, we, uh, uh, today we are going to defeat all your enemies. And you know what? We, they had 1,000 people there. 1.1 thousand people were watching right now live. 1 thousand people were less because they wanted today is the day we will defeat your enemies. <laughs> no, now that is not true. You only need to think a little bit to know that that's not true. What, what enemy? Our greatest enemy is Satan. So you want to tell me that you will defeat Satan today in the life of all those people? Satan will be defeated. What does that mean? Satan will be defeated. He is defeated in the sense that is he going to be killed and buried? Is that what it means to be defeated? What does it mean when Satan will be defeated? It means when he's defeated now, he will not come back tomorrow. He will not tempt them anymore. He will not bring them problem anymore because he's defeated. And people came. They want Satan to be defeated. Because people are not lovers of truth. What does that mean? They, they, they are not sincere with themselves. If you are really sincere with yourself, you will know that. Okay, I could maybe my, one of my problems will be resolved, but Satan will still come back tomorrow. We, they will not kill Satan. There is another program you know, we saw yesterday when the young men were telling me the kind of programs that people record, the people uh, people announce. Some people say we are going to kill and bury Satan. 
They are not going to be killed and buried. Well. You, because if that could have been done, Jesus would have done it. But people like deception. So people want things for themselves. As long as it's good for me, as long as it is, uh, it is working for me, as long as it's going to help me, they will go there. So people are not of truth. That's why Jesus said, when you speak the truth, people who are of truth will recognize your voice. So you don't need crowd. The truth doesn't need crowd. The truth only needs those people who are already in truth. They are the ones who recognize. For example, I did, I did a program about first fruit. About the fact that we don't need to be collecting first fruit from people. That's manipulation and it's a scam. Then somebody came and said, that, oh, but it works for me. So when I give forth fruit, I get something back. So she's not interested in truth. She's interested in what works. And remember when we were talking about uh, what truth is not. The first thing we spoke about what truth is not that truth is not something that works. So the fact that it works for you doesn't mean it's true. Because, and then another person said, uh, you know, there is money, there is uh, money, money or something, or what they call it, money miracle. Money miracle, which means I gave the pastor $1,000 and I came back home, I saw $2,000 in my, in my wardrobe or something like that. I said, well, you might have seen it, but it's not truth. It, because it is counterfeit. It is either a counterfeit or you forgot it there or somebody put it there. It's not truth. It's not a miracle. You say, oh, but it worked for me. You see, people don't care if things are true or not. That's why people are not going to this kind of event. So you wonder, why is it that people in the side of truth, there are people that are few? Because Jesus has said it, because people who know truth, I mean, who are of truth, they are attracted to the truth. But you'll be surprised. Most people, they are only attracted to what benefits them. Most people are only interested in, in egocentrism. Most people are only interested in their own personal gain. Most people are only thinking of gain and of personal gain. They are not thinking about truth. People don't bother about truth. But the, two, the good thing about truth is people who are of truth, they will, they will even pay price. They will even pay the price to go and not to lose that truth. They will even go at their own uh, inconvenience. They will even suffer. They will even pay a high price. They will even you know, go a high, a, a, a high length. I mean, a long length or whatever I can say, you know, to look for truth and to stand for truth. I remember one guy, Shegu Fatuma, you know, he's now busy. So he's not online right now because he's busy doing his research. He's a researcher. So uh, he said that <laughs> when he listened to Pastor Sunday, it, I mean, he was so huge on to this message that he's going to work at 7 o'clock in, in UK going to work, he will park his car on the highway and be listening. He said, I've done that not one time, not two times, not three times, not five times. And I've had this met from many people that they are driving, they put their car, they put the, the video, and they are driving to work. They are going all over London, or all over England, all over Germany, all over America, and they, they cannot just drop. They are paying a high price to get the truth. <laughs> Why? Those do are of the truth they come to me. That's what Jesus said. Those who are of the truth, they know my voice and they hear my voice. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. You know, people are ready to pay. I was talking to another guy, you know, Shola Uriade. I mean, no, Paul. Paul Uriade in Nigeria. I was there. And then another one, um, Gregory. Gregory. I was saying, ah, you people able to pay the money. Everybody in Nigeria is complaining about money. Uh, about, about the money for the for the data, they said they don't have data. The data is expensive. How come you are able to to to, to you know to be here every day and never miss a program? And, and they said, yeah, we are spending a lot of time on this thing, a lot of money on this. Yes, it's true. The data is expensive. We are spending a lot of money on it, but we love the truth too much. We cannot just do without this. The truth that we are hearing from here, the truth that, you know, is getting to our spirit, is just too much. We cannot just do without it. <laughs> so, the love of truth is the basic desire of, of any human being. That's supposed to be the, the basic, no, the basic, it must be our basic desire. It must be our pri uh, premier desire. It must be the top desire of any human being on earth. There is nothing else to love. Love the truth, God will find you out. Love the truth, even if you fall, we are going to stand. 
Love the truth. Even if you have difficulty, you are the, the way it's going to be found. Love the truth. No matter what happens, God will find a way for you. If you love the truth, you are on the side of God. Because one person, or even you are the only one, but on the side of truth, you are on the side of God. To be on the side of truth is to be on the side of God. Because God is only on the side of truth. So there is nothing you could desire more than to love truth. Just fall in love with truth. Make truth your principle. Make truth your objective. Make truth your number one priority. Make sure that you are on the wash out for truth. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you are going to be controlling other people or condemning other people or judging other people with the truth. No, let the truth. You remember the five levels of truth. Let the truth judge you. Let you let the truth work on you. You you be mindful about yourself. Don't be mindful about trying to tell people about truth or trying to judge other people, condemn other people with, with truth. No, you just fall in love with truth for your own self. Not to condemn other people, not to judge other people, not to talk them down or condemn them down. It's for your own self because the very first level of truth is telling truth to yourself about yourself. And even when you see other people who are doing the wrong things, and they are, you know, messing up, or they are sinning, or they are violating the principles, or even violating truth. What you are supposed to do, first of all, is to see that, that they are doing, or whatever they are doing, whatever is happening to them, and use that as an occasion to learn from the things that they are doing wrong, from whatever is going on with them, to, tell, to talk to yourself again, to talk to yourself again about the truth about what is happening, about them. Talk not to them, but to yourself. You talk not to them, but to yourself. So you talk to yourself about the truth, even when other people are doing what is wrong. That is what it means to love the truth. You are not using the truth to beat people in the head and to use it as an opportunity to condemn people or point accusing, accusing, accusing finger at people. But you are using even people's failure, even people's imperfection, even people's good habit or wrong habit, you are using it as an opportunity to speak the truth to yourself and to imagine yourself more in the truth, imbibe more of the truth into yourself. Then we talk about the third level of truth that you, you know, also. And the third level of truth is that you now are speaking the truth about yourself to the world. You are transparent. You, whatever your life is, is what you are presenting to the world. Whatever, you know, the truth is about you is what you are telling people. You are not presenting the picture of who you are not. You are not lying about who you are. You are not presenting a false image of yourself. You are agreeing with the truth of God concerning you and you are presenting who you are, who you really are. Not what people expect you to be, but the truth about yourself you are telling others. Then the fourth level of truth, and if you have missed this particular teaching, go back to the YouTube page, Sunday Delaja Official, and look for the, uh, the, the, the power and force of truth, and you will see it there. You will be able to go through the five levels of truth. And, uh, and uh, so the fourth level of truth is when you talk your own truth, the truth, the way you understand it, your own truth to another person. That means you are giving the other person the benefit of a doubt. You are saying, it is my truth, okay? This is how I understand it. And you are li ready to listen to the person and uh, so that you will be able to understand where they are coming from. Somebody is asking, where is my church in, I mean, in Ukraine? I mean, so you will answer him. We don't have church. Hey, not in Ukraine, in Nigeria. So then the fifth level of truth is that you, they, they ask when you now, after you have gone through all these four levels of truth, You've been able to speak to somebody, you've spoken to yourself you, about yourself, you've spoken to yourself about others, you sp I mean, about others, then you've spoken ab about yourself to others, you've spoken to another about your truth, uh, but then in, on the personal level, then you have the fifth level, which is when you stand to speak for the truth. Like Jesus is saying now, you speak for the truth, you don't compromise with the truth, you just declare the truth the way it is. Not on personal level, but just generally. You stand on the position of truth. You declare the position of truth to the world. So that's what Jesus is saying. Yeah, beautiful stuff. I love Jesus. I mean, when you begin to see how Jesus talks, you just fall in love with him. See what he's saying. Pilate was asking him. I mean, Pilate is a king. And this guy could decide either to kill him or to, to not to kill him or to release him. And he was asking Jesus, oh, are you, are you a king? Do you say you are a king? 
Well, you have said it. I will not. Uh, you, have, you just it's the truth. You said it, so that's who I am. And then he said to this end. Then he started talking about the main mission for him. I didn't come to the world to, be, to become rule to rule here and become a king here on the earth. No, that's not my mission. My mission on the earth is different. To be a king, I'm a king in the spirit realm, and where I'm coming from, I'm a king. But I'm not here to take your position and become a king. What I'm here for is this. I'm here, I have a cause why I'm here. For this end, I was born. Do you know what you were born for? Do you know the truth about your own birth? Do you know for what cause you were born? So Jesus right here is talking about purpose. That everybody needs to know the reason for which he was born. So Jesus here is telling us he knows the reason for which he was born. And when he puts it, he lowered it, so he zeroed it into one thing, truth. And your life will be in truth only when you discover the truth about God's opinion about you. When you discover God's opinion about you, that is the truth about your life. And when you begin to live that life out, it means you are living the truth. It is when you discover who you are, how you are supposed to be in the eyes of God, and you begin to live that out, that is you are living truth. We are all not living truth. We are living fake when we are not living in accordance to, to the prototype that God has designed for us. We are not, if we are not living by design, by the design, by the project that God has designed for us, we are not living truth. We are living in a lie. So either we are going to live in accordance to God's leading, God's instructions, that means we are living truth. So everything is supposed to be based on truth. So in your everyday life, you should find out, am I living the truth right now? In my work, is that the work that God wants me to be doing right now? Is that my purpose? Is that my calling? Is Then if, if it is not, you are not living according to truth. You are not living the truth. But if you are doing exactly what God wants you to do, what everyone wants you to do, you are living the truth. So he's saying, for this cause I was born. You must know for what cause you are doing what you are doing or you are born. So he said, for this cause I was born. And for this cause, I came into the world. <laughs> so I was not just born for this cause. So he knows what he was born for. He has a reason for what he was born for. Then he has a reason for being where he is right now. So his even location is by purpose. His birth is by purpose. His actions by purpose. His location is by purpose. So he, there is, and that is when he's in truth. When he's in line with what God wants him to do at that particular time, he's walking in truth. So walking in truth is walking in accordance to what heaven wanted for you. Or, may, you know, the picture that heaven is saying about you. That is walking in truth. So Jesus knew the, it was the truth about what, 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 why he was born. He knew the truth about why he came to the world. And he said... That reason why I came to the world is to bear witness about the ultimate truth, about the truth, to bear witness unto truth, unto the truth. Then he says, he goes on to us now, and he goes on to talk to that uh, pilot without mentioning his name. And he said, everyone that is of truth. So even if you are of truth and you, you are pilot, you are the king, you will hear my voice. And if you don't hear my voice, pilot, I'm sorry. It's not my fault. It's because you don't love truth. Because if you love truth, you will say, yeah, the truth is this man is, is, is innocent and I want to be on his side. So he said, everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. So are we getting God's instruction? If we are of the truth, we will, we will get his instruction. Are we orienting our lives on his Leading on his wisdom, on his you know direction. That's why you know a lot of people go to church today. We are more, we are more led by the voice of the church, or by the voice of religion, or by the voice of our uh, of our denomination, or by the voice of our go, or by the voice of our pastor. We are all more most of the time led not by the voice of truth. We would rather follow what somebody else has told us. They said, oh, this is the way to do it. This is the way we are doing it. Oh, the pastor said, or the bishop said, or the geo said, or the denomination said, or the church said, or the country said, or the government said. But the ultimate 
way to walk in the truth is the way Jesus said it. To hear the voice of truth inside you. To hear the voice of truth from the Spirit of God. To hear the voice of truth from the Word of God. To hear the voice of truth from heaven. To hear the voice of truth. <laughs> to hear the voice of truth uh, from, from your inner man, from your spirit man, from research, you know, even from the established truth, from the universal truth that, you know, that is out there already, from the laws of nature. You know, the voice of truth is not hidden. So Jesus said, anybody that is of truth will hear that voice. So, and when you live your, vo your life according to that voice, then you are living right. You are living according to truth. That is why, as Christians, the most important thing you could do in Christianity is to have personal relationship with God. Personal relationship with God. Because that is, because then you are putting the authority of truth above religion in your life. You are putting the authority of truth above church. Then you are putting the authority of truth above pastor. Then you are putting the authority of truth above you know, bishop and geo and everything. So personal relationship is more important though than church affiliation. Personal relationship is more important than denominational affiliation. Personal relationship is more important than religious practices. Personal relationship with God is to prove to God that your voice, your truth is my highest authority. Your leading is my ultimate authority. That your voice is what I want to hear. I want to first of all pledge my allegiance to you. So we should pledge our allegiance first of all to God, not to man. So our allegiance should be to God before church. It should be to the personal relationship with God before any religious activities that we're engaged in. So whenever people tell you that you have to do this and this, that, for example, somebody tells you, you have to be in church on Sunday. Maybe that time, Holy Spirit is telling you, go and do solitude that Sunday. So it is according to the voice, which truth will you follow? If you are more afraid of human truth, of denominational truth, you will go to church because you don't want people to condemn you. You don't want them to say you have been backslidden. You don't want them to say that you have fallen away from God. You don't want them to point accusing finger at you. Then you don't. Love, you are not a truth lover. You don't love the truth. You love yourself. You love your reputation. You love your own name. That's why you would rather go to church so that pastor will see you to please. You are a man pleaser. You are not a truth pleaser. What God wants us to be is to be truth pleaser rather than men pleasers. We, God is, uh, uh, is desiring that we will be truth lover rather than church lover. God is demanding and wanting us to be to truth, truth, uh, to be led by the truth rather than be led by the, by, the, by the church authority or by religion. So that's what Jesus is trying to say here. It is the truth that is the parameter. It is the truth that is the highest parameter upon which you could build your life on. It is the truth of what, what is true. And it doesn't matter what anybody else is thinking. Somebody else could come and say, they said this happened, they said you did this or this. Okay, for example, I have, uh, I have a friend of mine that is in, Amer that is in America. And, uh, you know, he had some issues. And, you know, he started a business and, People put money in him. They invested in him. And uh, so something happened. He couldn't pay the money back. And, you know, the governments came against him. And they wanted to, you know, you know, RS went against him. And the people started saying he's a criminal. Uh, he's a crook. He really wanted to deceive people before. Oh, he used the money for his own ends and things like that. And he kept, just kept on telling me, Pastor, I don't care. Let them think anything they want. But God knows the truth. You know, what matters is not what people think. What matters is not what people say. What matters is not what the media says. What matters is not what the whole world says. If you will know the truth, if you know the truth, just stand on that truth. Let your conscience be clear. Let your conscience be, be right. People, people don't know what is right. People don't know the truth really. But you know the truth. You know what happened to you. You know why that thing happened. Finish. You are a majority in the eye of God. You are justified in the eye of God. Because if you are walking in the truth, 
That's what my, my friend said. He said, as long as I'm walking in truth, as long as I am walking in truth, no fears. Because one man on the side of truth is, a major, is, a, is in the majority. And one man on the side of truth is on the side of God. God is always on the side of truth. And one man with God is also a majority. So, um, so it's amazing. So what Jesus is saying here is loaded. And some of us don't even know that this thing happened with, with Pilate and Jesus. That Pilate was questioning Jesus about truth. I mean, when did you hear a message like that the last time? That Pilate was questioning Jesus about truth and that Jesus was lecturing Pilate about truth the same day he was about to be crucified. That the top subject of, of, of Jesus, I mean, of, of discussion in the day they were supposed to crucify Jesus was about truth, the subject matter. You know, now, there were other subject matter. People were saying, why are you king? He didn't waste his time about, why am I king? I'm not king. He's talking about truth. Then they wanted to say, okay, who should we release? Should we release Jesus or Barabbas? Jesus didn't even care about, release me or you don't release me. What matters is that I'm on the side of truth. I have come to witness to the truth. I'm going to speak the truth. I'm speaking the truth. Even if you kill me and I die as a result of it, but I have stood for the truth. They say, are you king? He said, yeah, you said it. You said, well, and the Jews said, he's not our king, so we are going to kill him. So when they killed him, they crucified Jesus. They put a word on his neck, on the neck, on the top of the cross. If you see the cross of Jesus, there is something they always write there. It means the king of Jews. He said he's a king of, they are mocking him. He said he's a king of Jews. That's what they killed him for. So they put on the cross, on the place where they kill you, or where the, the judgment the reason. So the reason why they killed him was that he said he's, he's a king of Jews. That's the accusation. So, but it's a lie because he was talking about spiritual stuff but they said he wanted to be the king, physical king. So they killed him for that. And he was ready to be killed. He didn't care if he was going to lose his life for it. As long as he's witnessing to the truth, it means he's witnessing to God. The truth is always on the side of God. And God is always on the side of truth. So he knew they were going to kill him. And he's no more afraid of that. What was more important for him is that he stands in the position of truth. Even till the end. Even in the very last day of his, of his life on earth. He's standing on truth and testifying for the truth. So truth is based on God's standard. Truth is based on God's decisions. F truth is based on God's truth. Truth is connected to God. Truth is based on God's authority. So God, Jesus, by speaking the truth, he was establishing himself on the side of God. And he that knows truth will is on the side of God. And that, he was not even talking about God here. But you know, by telling, talking about the truth, he's talking about God. By witnessing about truth, he was witnessing about God. So, But, the, but, but that truth convicted Pilate because then after saying that, when Jesus said that, Pilate said unto him, what is truth? You see? Pilate decided, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Even though it was dangerous for Jesus to have spoken that truth, but the guy couldn't even, even though the secret is fine, but Jesus didn't compromise the standard of truth. Let me show you other scriptures about truth. John 4, 24. The Bible tells us, God, Jesus himself was speaking and said, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and, because you don't see spirit. So how do I measure spirit? How do I connect with God who is in spirit? Through truth. How do I come closer to God who is spirit? Who is invisible? By truth. So he said, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Truth is what you know. Let your heart be true. Let just love in truth. Know that you are walking in truth. In your conscience, you are walking in truth. In your daily life, you are walking in truth. 
in your in your in your activity you are working whenever you are working in the truth of who God wants you to be or wants to see you you are worshiping God worshiping God is working in truth doing the truth of what presenting yourself in the truth of what God wants you to be be in truth be in spirit you know direct your worship to God i mean it doesn't have to be you know today when you talk about worship you people are thinking about singing people are talking about music instrument People are talking about praise and worship. But Jesus is not talking about praise and worship. He's saying the greatest instrument of worship is spirit and truth. The ability to abide in the spirit and the ability to abide in truth. When you can abide in truth, you are worshiping. That is worship already. You might not be singing, but if you are in truth and you are directing your spirit, you are in spirit and directing your spirit to God and walking in truth, you are worshiping God. Worshipping is not what you do, is who you are. Worshipping is not the activities, but your state of heart. God must see your state of heart as being in truth. And God must say, see that you are in spirit. You are, you are directing that to God Almighty. So whenever you are on earth to do what God wants you to do, whenever you are on earth and you are waking up every day and you are going to fulfill God's God's desire for your life. You are going to do your life broadcast. You are going to write an article that is that is focusing on the truth of God. You are declaring God's truth by writing something or by doing video or by helping people or by speaking the truth or by looking for truth. You are looking for the interests of the truth. You are looking for the interests of God. You are worshipping at that time. By the time you are in, you know, you are you know, trying to live the true life of what God said you should become or what God said, you know, called you to be. By the time you are fulfilling your full potential, full resources that God has put in you, you are living truth out. And when you are living truth out like that, you are worshiping God. Whenever you are, you know, you are, you are doing everything God desires for you to do, when you are fulfilling his demand, his wish for your life, his purpose for your life, when you are pleasing him, when you are giving yourself, offering yourself as a living sacrifice to him, whenever you are doing what his desires for you, whenever you are doing what his heart wants, whenever you are seeking what his heart desires to glorify him, you are worshiping. <laughs> So, worship is not just activities. Worship is not musical instruments. <laughs> uh, worship is not ability to sing. I cannot be a worship singer. A worshiper. Why? Because I cannot sing. <laughs> worship. Oh, it could be true singing too, but it doesn't have to be true singing. <laughs> You can be in spirit in singing, you can be in truth in singing, but not just in truth, in, I mean, not just true singing, you could be in truth. You could be in truth even by just living every day. You could be in truth in spirit even by just living every day. Not just, <laughs> not just by taking the microphone. Some people without microphone, they say, I cannot worship. <laughs> No, it is it, it is without <laughs> it is without truth you cannot worship. It is without spirit you cannot worship. But once you are you you are trying to be in spirit and you are walking in truth, you are a worshiper. <laughs> that is the greatest worship God appreciates. <laughs> okay, that's why you don't see in the in the Old Testament. You see that the worship was always physical, because that time no, not everybody had the spirit of God in them. So it was always physical. They needed physical something, physical activities, and goo -goo 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 -goo, to bring the spirit of God to come. But here, the spirit of God is inside of you. <laughs> no physical anymore. It's coming from here. <laughs> That's why Jesus said. It, 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 you know, the time is coming and the time is coming again when nobody will come to this mountain to worship anymore. You don't need to do physical anything. You don't need to be physical to worship anymore. It is in you. It is in you. <laughs> so it is because the standard of David is that, you know, there was no spirit of God in everybody. Spirit of God was only on judges, on kings, on priests, and on prophets. So, so it was only on people like that. So somebody needed to bring that spirit. To come and they needed the instrument, but here 
It could be through instrument. It could be without instrument. You just need to, because now you have spirit of God yourself. Just line yourself in the spirit and walk in his truth. Then you are a worshiper. But you know, there are some pastors today that say, I cannot have a church. Why? I don't have money for instrument. <laughs> oh, my church is not growing. Why? We don't have instrument. We don't have Yamaha. Ah. So without Yamaha, Jesus cannot come. <laughs> so you mean without Yamaha, God is dead? <laughs> no. God he just needs you to appear in truth. If you can walk in truth, God will appear. Any any time you walk in truth and you walk, you 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 abide in truth, God appears and church begins. So that's why I say where two or three are gathered together, is there in the abyss. I mean, amazing stuff. So truth, so truth. I mean, tr uh, truth is connected to God, and you know, God is spirit. God is truth. Uh, uh, so that's why he's talking about you know, God is spirit, and those who worship Him. I uh, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay, John 4, 24. John 4, 24 says, no, that's what I just read, right? Romans 1, 25. Romans 1, 25 says, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie? You know, when people begin to now base truth on something else apart from God, that is lie. Truth must always be based on God. So that's why in Romans chapter 1, verse 25, God condemns people who do that. Whenever you are using your standard of truth as something else, there is judgment of God coming upon you. That's why homosexuals, uh, lesbians, when God said the standard is this, and even though we love people, but if they don't repent, God is going to judge them. Because God's standard is there, and you say, no, it's no more standard for me. Truth is reality. So whenever you make truth reality, because that means you have exchanged the truth of God for the lie. You exchange the truth of God for the lie whenever you say truth doesn't connect with God, or truth is not absolute, or truth is not objective, or truth is now subjective. It's what I think the truth is, that's the truth. Then that means you exchange the standard of God for a lie. Oh, okay, it's my opinion. I don't believe in the truth. Okay, it means you choose your own truth. You exchange the truth of God. There, there is no way anybody could exchange the truth of God and not be punished for it. God will not punish you because Jesus said, even those who refuse my words, people who don't believe me, it is not me who judge them. Oh. It is the truth that I've spoken to them that comes to judge them. It is the truth that you have rejected. It is the truth that you have exchanged for a lie that will come to judge you. It's not God. God. God is neutral. It's just like the truth about mm, what do you call it? Gravi gravi gravity. Gravity. So if you say, I don't recognize gravity. I hey, make you not recognize that now. But if you, don't, if you don't want to recognize gravity, don't recognize. Go and jump from 20th floor. So you say, okay, I jump from 20th floor. I don't recognize gravity. You think God is going to come to punish him and break him? No. God is neutral. But the truth that he violated, when he jumps, boom, he lands on the 20th, from the 20th floor, the truth will just, it's the truth that condemned him. You cannot break the truth, you can only break yourself. So that is what it is about, about truth. So people who exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship lie and serve creator rather than creator, they are the ones who are breaking themselves. So anytime we give glory to creation, rather than creator, we are in error. Like for example, what is it? Some people look at me and say, you are a motivational uh, speaker. I say, I'm not a motivational preacher. Why am I not a motivational preacher? Because even though I can motivate, but I'm not a motivational preacher. They said, okay, uh, what did they say again? Um, uh, you know, I'm not a motivational preacher. I'm not even a healing preacher. I'm not even a, a, a breakthrough preacher or a blessing preacher or prosperity preacher. I'm not a prosperity preacher. Make you not call me prosperity preacher. And I'm not even a healing preacher. So I'm not even, I'm not a preacher of anything other than what God stands for. I'm a preacher of God's kingdom. I'm a king preacher of God's kingdom. Because why? You see, when people begin to exchange the truth of God for something else, 
Okay, for example, the, why I buy say I'm not a motivational preacher? Because, like, for example, or people say you are a preacher of purpose. No, I'm not a preacher of purpose. You know, when people preach about purpose, you know what they do? They always say, uh, you are tired, eh? You okay? Okay, come. So that they see you. So let's say this is Kate here. She is a motivational preacher. You know, motivational preachers are what they say, and they talk, They are talking also about purpose, right? But they will say, God, I mean, they don't even say God. You have to, de de you have to, what do they say? You have to find out your purpose. Find out your purpose. Find out your, you know, you have to uh, uh, maximize your potential. Uh, maximize your potential. Become everything that God, you have been created to become. Uh, do all that. That is all good. But they are all saying, oh, you can make money. You can become business. You, you can go and get a good job. It is all about demand. When motivational preachers are preaching like that, it's all about you, 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 you. You can become this. You can become that. You get a car. Go and get a picture of all the cars that you want, the house that you want. It's all about you. The next job that you want, the next salary that you want, the next goal that you want to achieve, the next thing. But the real truth is, all the potentials that have been given, all the abilities that I, I, that I have, all the resources that God has given me, even though I can get money from it, I can get a house from it, I can get cars from it, but the, all, the truth is that I should use it, first of all, to fulfill his desire, to fulfill his purpose. So I don't just want to see my potential. I want to find out what does he want me to use it for. What are the plans that he has? I, am, I must use the potential that I have, the gift that I have to fulfill his plans for my life, to fulfill his agenda, to do exactly, to glorify him. But the, the, when you listen to the motivational preachers and business and everything talking about calling, purpose and all that, they are talking about you, about you to get a better job. For you to get a better promotion, better in income, that you should become everything that you could become, to get better career, higher career. That's why I'm not a motivational preacher. I'm not even a, a faith preacher. Because people who are faith preachers, I say, have faith in yourself only. But have faith in yourself for what? What is the purpose of having faith in yourself? Have faith in yourself so that you will be able to carry out the intentions and the plans of God. That is walking in truth. I'm not a motivation. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm, be there, you know, make you not know, get annoyed at me or you are the one financial guru. But me, you know, I, I preach on finances too. But let me tell you how to bring how to bring balance, the truth to your teaching about about financial fi finances. I preach on finances, yes. I preach on emp an empowerment, yes. But I'm not a prosperity preacher. Be prosperity preachers, what they do is that. Give and it shall be given to you. Oh, you will get a big car. You will get a good suit. You will get a great house. Come and give testimony. I gave this thing yesterday and today I got this one. Uh, I gave the Lord this one. Pastor said I should do this. I did it. God, I mean, I got this one today. It's all about individual. It's all about giving glory to themselves. It's all about their agenda. It's all about what they want. It's all about... So all the financial speakers and the financial guru and the prosperity preachers, they are all preaching. Even when they are preaching empowerment, they are all preaching that, okay, you know, go and do work. Go and do this more so that you will become this, so that you will get more, so that you... It is all about giving glory to the man of God, man to take all the glory and see what it says in Romans 1, 28. All those people who exchange the truth of God for a lie. You should not exchange the truth of God. And the truth of God is that we are all created by him. And for him. We are all created by him. And for him. Everything that we have. Everything has been created through him. By him. And for him. 
so that all the talents that we have, all the abilities that we have, all the potentials that I have, all the skills that I have, all the brain that I have, I must not change the purpose of it. The purpose of it should not be to give me success. The purpose of it is to give the kingdom of God success. The purpose of it is not to give me credit. The purpose of it is to give God credit. The purpose of my talents and my gift is not to give me profit. It's to give the kingdom of God profit. So everything that I've been given, my success is to give him glory. That is the truth. So when we change that and say, okay, uh, prosperity, and then you are giving testimony, and it's only true testimony, you are giving God glory. No, it is everything supposed to be for him and about him originally. And even pastors today, people pastor church, and they have also committed this sin. They have exchanged the truth of God about church to a lie. Because church today is not about God about okay, we are saying okay, we are using the name of God now that God uh, saved you, God, God get born again, God will get, help you. But the real purpose that people are using church today is to build their own name, is to build their own career, is to build their own financial basis, is to build their own influence. Once you are using all those things for yourself and for your own, you know, purpose and for your own, you no know, interest. You have just exchanged the truth of God for a lie. So the ministry is not supposed to be about you. The ministry is not even supposed to be about people who are getting saved. The ministry is supposed to be about him, about his truth, the truth about him, and about the worship, the worship of him in truth and in, and in spirit. It's everything is supposed to be about him. God created everything for himself, by himself, and for himself. So everything is supposed to be for him and by him. But when we change that, we begin to worship self. We begin to worship creation or creature instead of the creator. Each time you change the purpose of a thing, you begin to worship creation or creator, creature instead of the creator. That's what he said. Who has changed the truth of God, which means everything to glorify him and, to, and then begin to worship and serve creature rather than creator. So when ye begin to preach about motivational preacher that you will become successful, you, 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 you will become great, you will become this, you will get this aim, you will begin to get this, aim, you will become this, you, 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 we have exchanged unknowingly the glory of God for man. I am now the one, it's now about me. Yeah, I am now the one that's been worshipped because to whom you give yourself to in obedience, to that you are a slave. To that you worship. To that you bow down. So when the goal becomes me, my agenda, my goal, my interest, it means that I'm worshipping my ego. I'm worshipping myself. I have exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And I'm worshipping self, ego right now. Rather than, I'm now worshipping the creator, creation rather than the creator. The same thing when people say they are prosperity preachers or they are motivational speakers, or they are healers. Now you, have you heard people say they have healing ministry? Well, I didn't see that one in the New Testament, though. That somebody has, I know healing gifts, yes. But healing ministry? The only ministry we are all supposed to have is the ministry of the kingdom of God. We are all servants of the kingdom of God. We are all servants of God. We And the healing is supposed to be glory to God. You know what healing is doing now? Healing is to authenticate me. I do miracle. I bring healing so that you know that I'm the one that is anointed. I have come. I've arrived. I'm the superhero. So healing ministry, I don't have. I don't have healing ministry. I don't recognize it because the healing ministry is all about you and your ministry. So that to authenticate you, it is this same Romans one twenty five. They have exchanged the truth of God for a lie, thereby worshiping self, worshiping creation rather than Creator. You are supposed to use gifts of healing. To worship, so that people will worship the Creator, so that the authenticity will go to Him, so that the glory will go to Him, so that the praise will go to Him, so that He will be at the center, not your gift and not you. Even, in fact, some people have started worshiping the gift itself. I have the gift of this. I have the. In fact, people go to churches now just because the gift is there. People go to church because they see that that there is more miracle in that church. 
that so it is about the creation not about the creator anymore it is people go to that church but because that man is more anointed because it is about creation no more about the creator people go to church today because oh they have more testimonies there because it is not now about the creation no more about the creator people have exchanged the truth of god for a lie worshiping the creation the gift is a creation of God. God created it. The pastor himself who is preaching it is a creation of God. God created it. So whenever we make those things the centrality, instead of the kingdom of God the centrality, if when we make all those things the centrality, instead of God being the centrality, we exchange the truth of God for a lie. And we worship creation and serve creation rather than the creator. As in why, as in why he's saying, please, please, share, share, share. Let's all go and share this. Yes, I agree. We should all begin to go and share this. So that's why I'm not a motivational speaker and I'm not a healing minister. I'm not even a prayer warrior. <laughs> because the ones who say I have prayer ministry, they all, it's the same thing. They want, I, I have prayer ministry. All ministry are supposed to be God and his kingdom. Kingdom of God. God. Seek ye first the kingdom. And all, 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 and his righteousness, and all of that thing shall be added unto you. Finish. That's the ministry all of us have. When Jesus sent them to go and preach, they go and preach the kingdom of God. And then heal the sick. If there is nowhere he says, go and heal the sick, or do miracle, or do prosperity, or do, you know, other ministry, uh, prayer ministry, before kingdom of God. The kingdom of God always comes before, you know, he, he designs and all the wonders begin to follow. So priority, you know, because, because people want glory, people want attention, people want uh, accol accolades, people want applause, people want all the recognition. That's why people would rather say, okay, I have this ministry. Oh, I'm the anointed one. Some people have prophetic ministry. The same thing. But why are the prophetic ministry? It's to be able, they are, through prophetic ministry, people are exchanging the truth of God for a lie. Not that they are lying, you know. The gift might be working. Everything might be precise. But because the, the focus now is to worship the gift or to worship the gift owner, that is what we are talking about. When you exchange the purpose, something else is being worshipped. Either the man is being worshipped or the gift is being worshipped. When that happens, you have exchanged the truth of God for a lie. So it's supposed to be about God. It's supposed to be about God. All, you know, truth is always about God. It's not about ourselves and it's not about our gift. Even if it is God that gives you that thing. Even church. Some people now are worshipping church and denomination more than they are worshipping God. Not that they are worshipping church they are buying down. But their priority. They give themselves more in obedience to church, denomination and things like that than to the truth of God. Than to the truth of God. That's why Jesus said, sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. God talk about that sanctify so that we will not have anything. What is sanctify? Sanctify means cleanse them, cleanse them, wash them clean from everything else so that they will not be attached to any other thing. They will not have any other priority besides the truth. Sanctify them, purify them, get their heart free from everything that could contaminate them. Besides your word, your word is the truth which is your truth. Psalm, thank you, uh, uh, Kate. Maybe you'll come and testify later. Psalms 105 says, For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. No changing. It is God's truth. Truth belongs to God. And that truth is universal because it endures to all generations. Romans 2.2 2 says, But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth. You see, it is truth that God uses to judge. Against those who practice such things. Such things as exchanging the truth of God to worship creation or the, crea the, the creation. Psalm 119 says, Psalm 119, 151. Verse 151 says, You are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. <laughs> God is near. 
For what? For truth sake. And God is near where the truth is. Whenever you see truth, you see God. You are near, O oh Lord, because your will, your truth is being spoken. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth. Why? Because he is God and God is in him. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I'm the truth, so I'm the way, the life. So the truth, the truth. Truth is how God comes to God. Truth is the way and truth is the life. Because I'm the way is before the truth. I'm the life is after the truth. Truth is at the center. So truth is the way of uh, is the way. Truth is the life. You find truth, you find way and life. Psalms 119, 160 says, The entirety, the entirety of your word is truth. Absolute truth. That talks about absolute truth. The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. His truth is absolute and is forever. That means is at all time universal. Deuteronomy 32 4 says, He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of truth and without injustice. Righteous and upright is a God is a God of truth. Well, I could say more and more, but Yeah, so let's hear you guys. Maybe I saw any one of you would like to change. What did you people get from this message today? Truth is based on truth. I mean, on on uh, on, on on God. Okay, see if we play with me there. Or oh, madam, you say. You say madam, right? Hello, everyone. Katerina is here. Yeah, uh, well, Pastor, he said in the beginning that uh, uh, when we're looking for who we are, we have to be looking for truth, and truth uh, is God. And uh, uh, I was really impressed with what with what uh, Pastor was saying about uh, speakers, uh, motivational speakers, because many of us, uh, either we are Christians or not, we are looking for what the, those motivational speakers are saying, because we are living like Pavlov's dogs. We want we want to uh, be always stimulated with good words and something that is uh, said. Um, very nice to our ears uh, and uh, uh, maybe many people they don't like to hear the truth that uh, the gifts that we have is not for us actually actually it's, it's for kingdom of God and it's for God uh, houses that we have is not for us, for us again it's for God and for kingdom of God etc and so uh, and so on maybe because we don't want to actually hear the truth this is why those words of motivational speakers are so sweet to us like honey we like to hear them we hear them many times but maybe you uh, could um, uh, could um, identify this in your life when you hear too many motivational speakers it's like uh, they are preparing a meal for you everything is so beautiful you are like in beautiful restaurant there are but there is a beautiful Chinese plate uh, in front of you. It's very nice, you know, things, uh, forks and knives from silver. They will bring you food. You can hear that food is coming because you can feel the smell. Uh, it's very nice. You have appetite, you know, your uh, saliva is already here, you know. And um, those mod it's like those motivational speakers are telling us about ourselves something, about our gifts, about what is our purpose. And then... Uh, they just uh, finished speaking and you understand that you actually didn't get this food because you didn't get the truth. You just were prepared for something, but you never get it. When you start thinking, when you turn on your brain for thinking, when you become conscious, then you find out that actually, you know what, you were never fed by those motivational speakers because they never say it till the end. They don't say the whole truth. They can help you to find your talents very well but you never know for what they talents uh, those talents are 
they they tell you that this is for your lifestyle to have your good lifestyle because god himself he wants you to have good lifestyle okay but it's not enough and you feel it and you know it and that's why you are never fed you have you are always hungry you just like came to the restaurant you paid your money to only see nice plate in front of you all those beautiful waits waitress <laughs> running around you food smelling and you never ate and this is what uh, motivational speakers who don't say the truth are and i actually didn't hear anyone saying the that uh, truth is all about god most people they are not saying and actually christians also who become motivational speaker that don't say also this and the reason i think they don't say there are two reasons like what i see but i would like also to ask pastor what is the reason they talk like this for me uh first reason is they most probably they don't know they never digged so deep they were just looking for what is um what is popular to say and they they're saying these things that are popular because they know that people just want to hear what is pleasing them so to those two two reasons uh, why those people are behaving like this so uh so we have to go beyond motivational speakers we have to go beyond all these minister who ministers who are looking for their own agenda to uh when when they are on the stage okay because if you want to know the truth unfortunately they are not able to tell you the truth so we have to walk with god to find this truth and to be able to open our ears and to hear so this is what I wanted to ask a pastor. I wanted to ask why a pastor do you think those uh, motivational speakers they don't say, say the truth. They either I think that either they don't know, either they know it's not pleasant and that, that means that they will not be popular. No, yes, it's easy why they don't say that is God, right? Yeah. That God is true. It's because they don't want to ostracize people. They don't want to lose people. They don't want to lose people that are not Christians. Mm. They don't want to lose people that don't believe in Jesus. Mm. So they want to be here and there. They want to be neutral so that they will have more people, more, more followers. <laughs> you, you know, Pastor, at one point I also got into this trap. I started thinking that maybe if I don't say about God directly, people will listen to at least those principles that I am saying. Yeah, you could start with principles, but later on you still have to. So unfortunately, later on you you afraid to lose them because you gain some popularity. Like I'm talking about works that I was doing before because I did uh, a club for women in Greece. It was it became really popular. I was uh, teaching them uh, good principles and everything, but. Uh, it was difficult for me to turn, you know, them to actually what truth is. At some point, I understood it. I understood it was so difficult to tell truth uh, because I was afraid to lose them. So I were getting into this trap. But what I understood that it was a mistake because today, when I on my blog, when I talk about God, when I write about God. It's the most popular articles. You see? <laughs> yeah. So I think many people are getting God, into the truth will fight for you. God will fight for you. So so I think like if we follow motivational speakers that are really afraid to motivate, <laughs> really motivate because real motivation is about God. If they are afraid to motivate, why to follow them anyway? <laughs> because they don't know even what uh, motivates what must motivate you. Oh, this is what I wanted to share with you. Thank you. Anybody who else want to share with us? Who is the next person that would like to say anything? Please be free. If you want to share with us, anyone want to share with us? Yeah, please. Yeah, <laughs> Joseph in South Africa. <laughs> okay, good evening, everybody. Um, for me, what really struck, struck me tonight was the how we, uh, even as Christian, we like to hear what tickles our ear. We don't really want to know the truth. And <laughs> what tickles the ear? That and, is so true. And even as a pastor, I feel so convicted, you know, um, not questioning things and just accepting them. And because they are popular with other pastors, especially if a pastor you admire and has become popular, you take whatever they're saying that and then so you're using it so that you can also grow your church because that's a popular belief. That's what people want to hear. And that I was really... So touched to know that um 
if I say that and it does not line up with the truth of God, it means God is not there. And I've always often asked myself, it means I have had services where God was not there, literally, because God is on the side of truth. And I've really made a decision that, you know, when I go back, I'd rather be truthful to myself and to God. And um, the fact that God, what's more important is a relationship with God more than what's out there. Because, you know, sometimes you would go to meetings, maybe church meetings that have been organized by people and you know that you shouldn't be there or somehow you it doesn't align with the truth that's in your heart. You feel, but then you still go because it's something that um, it's the right thing to do. Be in because, terms of because of the public opinion, yeah, it's public opinion, and you just go there. And I've just made a decision that you know I'll, I'll still be truthful to myself because it's better to be truthful because of God will be there with you because God is always on the side of truth, no matter who you are, what position you hold. So I should not seek for popularity, but I should seek for the truth because that's where God is. And this has really been liberating, and that's what I'm taking home. That's what I'm going to practice. Firstly, to be truth. To be truthful and to um to know that when i'm truthful i'm on the side of god and also the other aspect that really touched was on uh, john 4 24 which talks about um jesus saying that those who worship me worship me in truth and in spirit and it's so true um but yet we, i've missed it you know often we think uh you know worship when we say truth we don't understand what it actually means um there's no sincerity sometimes in our clapping of hands sometimes it's all about ourselves how we feel um the music that we like we don't actually understand our preferences our preferences you know um so I, it has really convicted me to know that you know being honest, not god's preferences yeah not preferences. god's preferences and going there and just jumping but then we are not really worshiping god it's just about us if i feel good um, and I've just really been convicted and I made a decision that um, I, I will be on the side of truth. I'm actually making a covenant that, that I will be um, a truth seeker more than anything else. So I really appreciate all these teachings. Thank you, DSA. Thank you. Who is the next person? Anybody want? Okay, do you people have the comments? Mm -hmm. Can you give me the comments so that I can read the comments out for people? Everything I, I could see everything here. Okay. Linus says, "If God is living in you, you will love the truth and practice the truth." Yep. But it's not automatic. You've got to desire it. If you say you th if you think it's just automatic, everybody will be living that way. <laughs> And Monica said, but the truth is, majority don't always go for the truth. People prefer to lie. <laughs> As in one, as in one said, the truth in church of today is, if you truth, eh, oh, okay, the truth, if we, if the truth is spoken in the church of today, the church will disperse. <laughs> the members will scatter. <laughs> Even as they see the scripture about the truth in tithe and offering, some of them still say, I don't care because it's working for me. But that's why we started by saying, what is it? Truth is not what works. Because if you are saying it's because it's working for me, is it truth? No, truth is not what works. Well, because it's working for you, that doesn't make it to be the truth. Okay. Gift Amos says, this is so true. Sometimes people live half truth and not all that glitters is gold. Gift says, actually, the reality is that a lot of people abandon the truth just for the church. <laughs> so people would rather prefer to stand for the church and pick the church rather than standing for the truth because the truth uh, will take time to vindicate you but then the church you want you don't want to get embarrassed you want to be on the popular side immediately Hassan Taiwo says I will see you soon my pastor you will see me soon are you coming to the Ukraine maybe she's coming for the teenage 
uh, HMT. Okay, maybe maybe not. I don't know, but that's what she said. She's coming to Ukraine. A.K. Gossman says, they have turned the focus to oneself and not the maker himself. Yes, that's the problem when we begin to focus and the focus of the church or worship or anything we do is not God, it's not God, but anything else, then we deny the truth. We, we, that's what he said. We are worshiping creation rather than creator. Nkem Egwim says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Freedom has come to the body of Christ through this message. Thank you. Linus says, after listening to DSA, I don't listen to any other preacher anymore. Not even my geo, because it, can, it carries the truth. <laughs> Ada Love said, the testimony is now about glorifying the pastors in church, actually. Not God, not the truth. Emeka Kemjika says, this is true, Bishop. This is the message Christians particularly our African brothers and sisters need. It emphasizes, the, emphasis, the emphasis is all about what they will get to glorify themselves and not what God has given them to glorify Christ. Yeah. So whenever anything we glorify is what we are worshiping, really. We are, we are only worshiping. Anything we glorify, that is our God. That's what we worship. Uh, Reverend Roslin says, God is raising end-time army for kingdom change. Satan is a liar and he is in big trouble now. He lost the battle hands down. Thank you for the truth that has set that sets free. Femi Ikotun says, Wow, God doesn't judge. It is the truth that one violates that judges him. Yep. Because you cannot break the truth, you can only break yourself. That's what Mary answers answer says. As in one says, I love this truth. Linus, when the truth is not absolute, it becomes a lie. As in one says, every day DSA is revealing something new here. <laughs> Bibo way he said grace to, grace more grace pastor we have to worship God in spirit and in truth Shinwe said wow hallelujah so standing in truth and walking in truth means worship God Paul said then I'm a worshiper <laughs> Kole, Kole Ola Olushegu says, okay, I got it. A man of truth is a worshiper of God. When we walk in truth, we are actually worshiping God. Wow. Gift Amos says, don't forsake the gathering of bread on your bread. And the same ch church leaders almost use the force to manipulate my life. That force has nothing to do with the run, run, running away from the deception of the church, but it's actually meant how you treat your fellow brothers yeah so that's yeah it's true that phrase don't forsake the fellowship or don't leave the assembly of your brethren it's been used as manipulator as a lie to manipulate people so that they will keep them as slaves in church Ezinwa Ezinwa says, but how come the church doesn't teach these kind of messages? <laughs> Benin is quoting the essay. Worshipping is not what you do, but who you are. James Ogwe says, <laughs> the essay is on fire tonight. Firing on all cylinders, I might add, also. Marie answer, listening to DSA is the only free education you can ever receive in your lifetime. <laughs> Linus, the DSA always speaks constructively with understanding, precision, and clarity. 
Whenever I listen to him, I, I always learn. Videm is uh, quoting DSA. Truth is based on God's standard. Yep. James says, is Sister Anastasia McDonald in the house at all? I have missed your life notes as DSA unveils mysteries. Yeah, Anastasia Madula is right here with me. He's not right. She's not writing because she's here. She's right here in the kitchen. <laughs> Reverend Roslin says, truth is the missing uh, jigsaw in the world. Let the truth come into the affairs of men. There will be peace and love in the world again. Videm says, I got it. As long as I'm walking in truth, nothing to fear. Yep, you got it. Muiwa Teophilus says, uh, DSA, please, I would like to know what it means for one not to forsake the fellowship of the brethren. Oh, I have, I have a one month long message on that one. A pastor said the fellowship of brethren is only for believers of Christ. How true is that? Fellowship of brethren is what we are doing right now. On this Facebook, this is Fellowship of Brethren, right, right now. Fellowship of Brethren means where two or three are gathered. That's in short. Omonica said, be truth pleaser rather than truth church pleaser. Yeah, that's what DSA said. Vivian Taylor, amen. Pastor teaches us the truth, not a man pleaser. Thank you. James says, personal relationship with God is above church affiliations. Yep. Rochelle White, I'm so thankful to you, Pastor Sunday. If you had been, if you had left for Nigeria, we would not have been hearing this truth. <laughs> so a lot of people are like you. They are happy that I've not gone to Nigeria yet. So you are hearing this truth right now. <laughs> <laughs> Akisa, I say, if this past, if what this pastor Sunday is teaching today is true, that means that all of us have been living a fake life. Ezine <laughs> 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 and Yoma said, I thank God for the anointing on this servant of God. This is my second time stumbling on your live broadcast. But I'm coming out every day, twice a day. So you don't need to stumble. You could actually be here every day. 5 p.m. Nigerian time and 7 p.m. Nigerian time at, and also uh, 5 p.m. British time, 7 p.m. British time. And in America, it's 12 noon uh, in the afternoon in the Eastern time and 2 p.m. in the afternoon Eastern time as well. James Ogbe said, this is church right here, online truth service station. <laughs> Shola Omole says, don't ask DSA of DSA's church. Let us face the truth. This is not issue of church, but issue of truth. <laughs> so true. Kunle Adeni Pekun said, not condemning people, but searching ourselves based on what is discovered on others' lives. Yep. On the side of truth is the truth maker. Truth goes beyond theories of doctrine. Truth is not religious. Yep. Rosalind, Reverend Rosalind says, heaven is here. Rapture is near. Reflect and make amends. Self-evaluation and constantly checking on practice and relationship with God. Hallelujah. There is no skeleton to hide. Yep. Jane Munsaka said, the love of truth should be the primary desire of, for anyone. Make it a priority and objective. Linus said, I even listen to you when I'm walking in the street or I'm sleeping. <laughs> oh, Monica said, I'm so addicted. Even I, even I hear your voice in my sleep. 
<laughs> Benny, Benny Gibbs said, I even listen while sleeping too. Rosetta said the same thing. Bafu, Bafu said the same thing. <laughs> Jane Musaka said, this topic is the foundation of, for Christianity. This is a lifestyle of a believer. Love the truth and live the truth. Rochelle Roche Wife says, since I've been on this platform, I've just noticed how rampant religion has been. <laughs> Magnus Ahmed said, this is my best topic, truth. Alexander Bundaruk says, Jesus said that nobody can see God, mm -hmm. but anyone can see the truth that is of God. Beautiful. Emmanuel Alote said, truth is too costly. People will rather pay for the lies. Yep. Jane said, the truth is universal, absolute, subjective, corresponds with reality. I should not hide the truth. I should not play political correctness with the truth because it is the ultimate. Marie Ansa said, this is what will really set people free. Thank God for your life, Pastor. D. Albertina said, DSA is a man of truth. Thank you for such great teaching. Muiwa Theophilus, DSA, what the pastor said was that when you go for evangelism on the days of church fellowship, you can't fellowship with pagans because they are not brethren. <laughs> you are not fellowshipping. You are not going for evangelism to fellowship. You are going to evangelism to save people. It's like people told Jesus that, you know, because it was Sabbath, he cannot save people. He cannot save the, the needy. So it's the same thing this pastor is telling you because it's Sunday, you cannot save people. Just come to church. So that you join the crowd and they will count your head that you are there. So it is rubbish. God is more interested in saving on Sabbath than going to church on Sabbath. That's the truth. Faithful David, the truth has been turned upside down and many captured by it that they will even die for it. Uh, thank you for doing this, sir, uh, for sharing the truth. This is the true love for the people. Thank you. Truth. Give, <clears throat> gift Amos said, truth has many attacks. When you are ready for full truth, be ready to lose friends <laughs> and loved ones, but rejoice because truth is unforgettable element. Onyeka Aleka said, Pastor, I am sharing and inviting everyone I know. This is the best gift I could offer them. Right. For like Israel, speaking the, of the truth, does the Bible support the doctrine of rapture? Oh, yeah, I think it's opposite. Jesus himself spoke about that. Faithful David said, thank you for doing this, sir. This is true love for the people. Thank you. Omonike, thanks so much, DSA, for this teaching. Now, when they want to take offering, they say the church is not in need and you are not helping the church with your offering. Ah, they now say the church is in need and you have the church with your offering. Because of your teaching regarding to, uh, tithe and offering, DSA, you are a blessing to this generation. God bless you. So they are no more pushing. They have lowered down the steam. Faithful David said, the truth has been turned upside down and many captured it that they will even die for a lie. Olusha Yogusola said, do people really want to hear the truth or prefer social class gathering called church? What do you do when people worship pastor instead of digging deep into the world? Well, that's, that's why you have to leave that kind of place and come here and, you know, seek for the truth. Shika says, is Sunday the true day of worship? No, every day is true day of worship. <laughs> Asan Taiwo said, Pastor, I just believe in the truth that I will see you soon. I'm watching from Ocean State, Nigeria. Thank you. Wow. Wow, you are a woman of faith. She does say, Emmanuel say, I can feel the Lord Jesus being unhappy because the truth is cast these days. Because greater percentage of carriers of messages in the church are false teachers and false prophets, but we can make up our mind to replace them with undiluted truth. Beautiful. 
Ada says, many have been deceived and want to be deceived, but only the truth will stand the test of time. As in, as in a, uh, a yoma, the truth never changes. Azima, Azima, the truth of today has really liberated my mind, set on another way to start approaching people with the kingdom message. Yep. Helen Folak Kemi Ajimati says, The Bible was clear that Christ is the truth. Should we take responsibility as believers for not digging into the world rather than blaming the motivational speakers? Most believers just lose the sense of discernment because, between the truth and lies because we are connected to church and not to Christ, who is the truth. We need to retrace our steps back to where the edge is broken. Beautiful. Linus says, if you, okay, I've said that. If, if, if you, if God is living in you, you will love the truth and practice the truth. No. <laughs> I say it's not automatic. Paul Uriah Day, thank you so much. Glad for this truth. Muiwa DSA, thanks for this truth. DSA, you just keep reading the scriptures we have read before, but we don't even understand it. <laughs> But we have read it in a religious way. My eyes are open again and again. Oh, they say thank you. <laughs> Timothy Eze says, Sir, your gospel teaching is the best. I love what you are doing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Well, here we are. Today is over. The day is over today. Do we start post can you not post on that It's after. Yeah. It's after. Okay, we are, so tomorrow, let me tell you some, uh, some change that we are going to have for our live broadcast. We are going to have live broadcast the same time, 7 o'clock Ukrainian time. That is uh, 5 p.m. Uh, British time, 5 p.m. Uh, Nigerian time, and 12 uh, noon Eastern time. But the thing is that um, in Ukraine here, we have what we call summer fast. So people come, you know, who want to fast, and we declare a fast in the church. So we are praying and fasting. So that starts from Monday, from tomorrow. So prayer and fasting goes on from tomorrow in our church till Sunday. So every day I'm going to be in church, and I'm going to be preaching from there. That means that uh, we are not going to be having this week uh, all the 5 o'clock program. That is like uh, the attributes kingdom fruits and book review we are not going to be having that this week because this week we are going to be having uh we're going to be having church service so um and it's going to be live broadcast it's going to be broadcasted live uh, i hope we'll be able to broadcast it but i think we should be able to broadcast it and uh, so join us we are going to be in the church and uh, we're going to be broadcasting it so join us Gift Amos says, uh, since I started to listen to DSA, I now find it more, much more easier how churches and church leaders is faking it to have their own ways. The seed of truth is very easy to have root with the Spirit of God. Thanks, my mentor, and more grace. Victoria Otangwa said, this is the best platform ever. I have been so, so transformed. Thank you, DSA. Uh, Benny gives says, thank you, DSA, for your sacrifice and love in setting us free from religion. <laughs> I've never heard of this teaching before. All I heard is so seed. <laughs> <laughs> Marie Answer said, you are not worshipping God when you forsake his standard. Anything aside God's standard is fake. Linus said, DSA is not a healing or prosperity preacher. DSA is not a motivational speaker as well. I'm a kingdom preacher. Gift Amos says, since I started to listen to DSA, I now find it easier how church, church leaders... Okay, I've read that. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for your time. 
We will be back tomorrow. We will be back tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Good night.